so welcome to day 24 for problem of the day from GFG so let's look at today's problem okay so you are given an array of length n also a single integer k your task is to split the array into k non overlapping non empty sub arrays for each of the sub arrays you calculate the sum of them and we have to find the GCD of that sums such that this uh, GCD is maximum okay okay so it's very uh, big and confusing let's take an example to understand the problem okay so here we go so we have this array 6, 7, 5, 27, 3, right? Now, what you have to do, we have also given a number k equal to 4. We have to split the array into 4 sub arrays, okay? Such that, if the sum of these elements in each sub array, suppose for this sub array, the sum is this one, that is, sum of all its elements this sum is suppose is 2 this sum is suppose is 3 this sum is suppose is 4 see there are many possible ways to split this array into 4 subarrays right but what the answer is asking you is to give something where the subarrays uh, having sum is 1 is 2 is 3 is 4 if you find the CD of it, suppose it be G, then this is actually the max of what? If you find this this sum, suppose it's 1 dash, is 2 dash, is 3 dash, is 4 dash, and you find the GCD of this sums, then G will be greater than this. If you find some another sub array, with another collection of sums the GCD of it suppose G double dash then G will be maximum G will be greater than G dash also G, G double dash also okay so G is the maximum of all GCDs of all collection of sum of sub arrays of this array okay so this is the problem okay so we don't need to just uh, see all these subarrays okay so don't need to worry now here is the tricky part here we will use just the property of gcd nothing else okay so this is very easy question actually okay when you know that so what you have to know is just that gcd is called greatest common divisor what you have to know that you have to care about these two words very carefully okay now suppose i got the solution just forget about everything suppose i got the solution suppose i got four subarrays here k equal to four right suppose i got four subarrays and their sum is s1 s2 s3 is 4 right suppose gcd of them is g okay you know what is the properties of g g is the common divisor so g will divide s1 g will divide s2 g will divide s3 g will divide s4 right so if a number Suppose it divides 6, right? 3 divides 9, 3 divides 12. So can I say that 3 will divide 6 plus 9 by 12 also? Yes, of course, I can say. If A divides B, A divides C, A divides D, and so on, then A will divide their sum also. Why so? Why so? 
because this b plus c plus d plus dot 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 by a a divides b that means after division i will get an integral value right so 3 divides 6 that means what if i divide 6 by 3 i will get an integral integer value 3 divides 9 that means if i divide 9 by 3 i will get an integer value so a divides b means b after dividing b by a i will get an integer value so this thing i can write like b by a plus c by a plus d by a plus dot 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 everything by a so b by e is an integer as a divides b right so this is i1 the result is i1 a also divides c because uh, a divides c right so this result is suppose i2 result means the uh, quotient after dividing c by a this is suppose i3 and all, so on so sum of all integers is always an integer right dividing b plus c plus so on by a we got an integer that means a divides b plus c plus d plus so on so what i want to say if a number divides some numbers then that number will divide some of those numbers also right so i can say that g will definitely divide s1 plus s2 plus s3 plus s4 now look at this that thing i know right this thing i know s1 plus s2 plus s3 plus s4 s1 represent this sum s2 represent this sum s3 represent this sum s4 represent this sum so sum of all these sums is actually what is actually sum of all these elements of array right so here actually this thing is 6 plus 7 plus 5 plus 27 plus 3 that is 35 uh, 35 plus 6 41 plus 7 48 right so in our case this sum is 48 right so what can i say <clears throat> that g my answer g divides this 48 i am imagining the answers i don't know the answers but what i know here <coughs> is that this sum now what does that mean what does this line actually mean okay this is a very important line and this represents actually our answer so g divides this sum that means that our answer will be from one of the factors of sum of all elements of the array right if our array sum is s if our array sum is s then our answer is dividing s right so that means if a number is dividing some another number then g must be one of the factors of s is factors means what factors means what collection of numbers which divides s right for example 48 48 is divisible by 1 right divisible by 2 right divisible by 3 right 
divisible by 4 right divisible by 6 right divisible by 8 right and then uh, divisible by 12 24 <clears throat> and uh, uh, 48 right so all these are factors of 48 that means each and every number here will divide 48 so this is the supreme collection of divisors of 48 so g must have to be one of them g can't be another some another uh, number out of this because this is the all collection of numbers which divides 48 right so factors means what collection of all numbers which divides this that is g must be from all of these numbers one of them will be g okay so here is our members one of them will be our winner so i don't know who, who the winner is till now okay so this information we got right that our answer should be belonging to this g uh, with this list okay now see one thing that here is our sub -arrays, like right here is our sub -arrays, right so tell me one thing uh, let's uh, let's first uh, minimize that thing so this is very helpful to me right now okay and this is very helpful also Okay, now see, if G divides S, that means G must be, belongs to that collection of factors, right, that's okay. Now G divides S1, now what is S1? Here is my elements, right? Array elements x1, x2. I am writing like this x1, x2, x3. Suppose it has n elements, this array, okay. So I am writing this array like this general term. Now, s1 is what? s1 may be x1 or it may be x2 because it is contiguous and uh, non overlapping, okay. So that means actually this, uh, uh, sorry. That means actually S1 may be X1, X1 or S1 may be X1 plus X2 or S1 may be X1 plus X2 plus X3 and so on. Okay. Now what is S2? Suppose S1 is X1. Suppose S1 is X1. Then s2 maybe x2 or x2 plus x3 or x2 plus x3 plus x4 right or so on now if s2 is x2 <coughs> then what is s3 s3 may be x3 or it may be x3 plus x4 or maybe x3 plus x4 plus x5 or it may be something else similarly if s1 is x1 plus x2 so here s2 may be x3 or x3 plus x4 
and so on. Now, see one thing that if I do S1, then it is sum of some contiguous elements. It may be this or this or this or like something. It can be the full full uh, elements containing full elements because our k may be greater than one. Okay, so I have to split into two or more servers. So if this server contains all the elements, then this will be empty, and our array servers are not empty. Okay, so if I do is one plus is two, it's also look at here. S1 plus S2 here in this case what? X1 plus X2 or X1 plus X2 plus X3 or X1 plus X2 plus X3 plus X4. In this case, S1 is X1 plus X2 plus X3, X1 plus X2 plus X3 plus X4, X1 plus X2 plus X3 plus X4 plus X5 and so on. In this case, also same X1 plus X2 plus X3 x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 like this okay so now what can i say is that s1 is up to some index it's it's actually containing the sum before and itself so i mean to say this is my array elements like what is this one is containing either this one or this one sum or this one sum s1 plus s2 plus s2 is containing what it's containing uh, this sum or this sum or this sum right so that is the pattern that's not so much important. What is important is that G divides S1 and G divides S2 also. So can I say G divides S1 plus S2? Right. Because if A divides B, A divides C, then A divides B plus C. Right. If A divides B. So A divides B means that A is divisible by B. That means when dividing B by A, I will get an integral value as my quotient and 0 as my remainder value. Right. Suppose 4 is divisible by 2. That means I get an integral value and there is no remainder. Now g divides is 1 plus is 2. That's that's fine. Okay. Now also g divides is 3 also. So can I say G divides S1 plus S2 plus S3? Right. Okay. So now, like this, G divides S1 plus S2 plus S3 plus dot 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 plus SK. Suppose I have, oh yeah, SK. I, I, I split the array into K sub arrays. All their sums are S1, S2, SK. So G divides S1, G divides S1 plus S2, G divides S1 plus S2 plus S3, G divides this thing, right? Now, one thing to look at it is that the very much important thing is that if I make an array like this, X1, comma, X1 plus X2, comma x x1 plus x2 plus x3 comma x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 comma x1 plus comma dot 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 the last term will be x1 plus x2 plus dot 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 plus xn right and our 
original array was like this okay and I created some array like this so you tell me that that this s1 plus s2 is one of these elements right and s1 is also one of these elements if s1 I want you to look at this thing very carefully see if s1 is x1 if s1 is x1 then s2 can be what s2 can be x2 then s1 plus s2 is x1 plus x2 that is s1 plus s2 will be this if s1 is this then s1 plus s2 can be this or if s2 is x, x2 plus x3 then s1 plus s2 is x2 x1 plus x2 plus x3 that is s1 plus s2 can be this also right or you can say that like this or you can say that if my s1 is x1 plus x2 if my s1 is x1 plus x2 then my s2 can be what x2 can be x3 x3 plus x4 like this x3 x3 plus x4 like this so s1 plus s2 can be x1 plus x2 plus x3 or x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 or something else so all of them are the elements of this array all of them means what of what all of them these elements s1 plus s2 not s1 or s2 separately s1 plus s2 s1 plus s2 plus s3 s1 plus s2 plus s3 plus s4 s1 plus s2 plus s3 plus s4 plus s5 s1 plus s2 plus s3 plus s4 plus s5 plus s6 right so you take whatever s1 you want they must be one of these elements see if n s1 is x1 then s s1 plus s2 can be what it can be x1 plus x2 or it can be x1 plus x2 plus x3 right or it can be x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 like this so all these elements are here right so what you can say that if i create this array x1 x1 plus x2 x1 plus x2 plus x3 x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 dot 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 x1 plus x2 plus dot 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 plus xn then s1 s1 plus s2 s1 plus s2 plus s3 s1 plus s2 plus s3 plus s4 and so on all these will be one of those elements right all these will be one of these elements okay here one thing to notice is that i cannot take s1 as x1 plus x2 plus i cannot take x1 as x2 x1 as x1 plus x2 plus dot 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 plus xn right taking that uh, k is greater than 1 because s1 is if s1 is this there are also some s2 s3 has to be exist right they have they must have some elements to be that sum okay so if all the elements are in s1 set then what are s1 s2 s3 what are s2 s3 if all of them are creating s1 right so s1 is not containing the whole elements 
what I want to say the main thing is that all of these elements are actually here in my array right and another thing is that my g divides this one g divides this one plus s2 g divides this one plus s2 plus s3 and also so on so g divides s1 g divides s1 plus s2 g divides this thing g divides this thing g divides this thing right so what i can say is that these are uh k right these are k in numbers here is one element here is two elements here is three elements at the last we have k elements right so we have in total k numbers k sounds okay so here are n elements our original size was n original array size one was x1 x2 dot 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 x xn we make this array from this original array okay so this array size is n and these elements are k so k is obviously less than n okay because we have to split this this array right so if n is splitted into some as sub arrays uh, k sub arrays then k must be less than n so what i want to say is that if g is the answer then g will divide all of this all of this right and uh, also uh, yeah so g divides at least k elements of this array this array suppose this array is uh, x can you see it g divides s1 g divides s1 plus s2 g divides s1 plus s2 plus s3 g divides this thing so this is our first element this is our second element this is third fourth so on this is our kth element which is s1 plus s2 plus s3 plus dot dot sk okay so g divides k k elements g divides k elements g divides k elements and all these elements all these elements are coming from either x1 or x1 plus x2 or x1 plus x2 plus x3 one of these elements are they right so these k elements are belonging to these l these n elements right so g divides k elements and these k elements is belonging to our x array of n elements and g is our answer g divides k elements what k elements these k elements and these k elements is actually belonging to this array okay x1 x1 plus x2 x1 plus x2 plus x3 x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus root and plus x so these k elements are belonging to this array and g divides these k elements that means that if g also belongs to the set of our factors of that sum s set of our factors of that sum s right so g divides s so g is one of the collection of factors of s right 48 factors 48 factors one of the 48 factors in our example so what does that mean that i can say 
that those factors those factors okay listen to my words carefully those factors which divides at least k elements of x if g is our answer g divides these k elements which belongs to this array g divides k elements which belongs to this array that means g divides k elements of this now there is no guarantee that g only divides k elements it may be that g divides more than k elements that is why i am saying at least k elements okay g dividing k elements that's fine but there is no guarantee that g divides only k elements there may be some other elements that g is dividing so those factors which divides this k elements at least k elements of of this array one of them must, must be g right suppose uh, uh suppose g1 g2 g3 dot 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 g f be the elements which divides at least k elements of this array okay suppose g1 g2 and there are also another elements suppose g1 g2 gf be the elements which divides which divides at least k elements of x right so one of them is my answer right so which one that's very easy the max of them right max of g1 g2 gk all these elements is coming from what the sums factors right the sum of the all the array elements given array elements they are factors coming from them right and they are also uh, satisfying the condition that they are, they, they are dividing the k elements right these k elements that means they they can be the dcd of those s1 s2 s3 dot dot sk but which one of them all of them are dividing the k elements all of dividing the k elements so all of them actually dividing s1 s2 s3 dot dot sk but i need the maximum one if some element divides s1 some element divides s2 some element divides s s1 plus s2 plus s3 this one this one also so uh yeah so what i want to say is that g1 g2 gf g1 g2 gf all of them is dividing is dividing s1 and s1 plus s2 and s1 plus s2 plus s3 and s1 plus s2 plus s3 plus sk right so suppose 3 divides 9 3 divides 12 9 divides 9 9 divides 12 okay 1 divides 9 1 divides 12 all of them are dividing 9 and 12 as g1 g2 gf all of them are dividing s1 s1 plus s2 s1 plus s2 plus s1 so they are all the common divisors of s1 plus s these things right so they are actually common divisor of s1 s2 s3 sk also okay so they are common divisors but greatest one i have to choose so which was is the greatest one the maximum of g1 g2 gf okay so our answer is actually the maximum of this g1 g2 gf okay and we are done with the problem right so 
this is the thing actually more or less now let's uh, try to code so in sum equal to 0 calculating the sum create an array list to, cull, to uh, uh, collect all the factors factors list and then uh, for in i equals uh, 1 i list then sum plus plus if sum sum i equals 0 then factors list I will add them to my factors list right okay so except one because one divides everyone that's very weird so and except some also because for case of 48 1 and 48 divides 48 so we, we are not gonna consider those Let's let's uh, let's consider those. So no problem. And we are uh, uh, just got the factors. Okay. Now we are creating an array. We can just convert our array into that x array. So what we need to do we need to do is uh, do <coughs> doing array i plus equal to array i minus 1 okay now that actually calculates uh, x1 x1 plus x2 x1 plus x2 plus x3 and so on because array i is this array i plus array i minus 1 and similarly for the next element so here is suppose uh, our array suppose 1 2 3 okay uh, suppose it is our array one two three. So what I'm doing? I'm doing keeping it as as it is. Two is two plus one. Three is three plus this thing. Okay, that is six. So that is why I'm getting this x one x one plus x two x x one plus x two plus x three. Suppose here is also some elements. Four five six seven. And what will I get here? 4 plus 6, 10, 5 plus 10, 15, 15, uh, 15 plus 6, 21, 21 plus 7, 28. That's I am getting that x1, x1 plus x2, x1 plus x2 plus x3, right? That thing. Now I have to check for every number, every factors from our factors list that if it uh, uh, divides our uh, uh, the, if it divides the at least k elements of that x array x array is now my original array so my original array actually becomes now the x array because i have did that operation on our original array so our original array actually becoming x now it becomes x now 
So I will do the operations. That is checking the factors dividing at least k elements of that array x or not. I am checking now what? That my factors, which one of them are dividing at least k elements from x. x is now my array i. Okay. So, uh, i equal to 0. I less than I plus plus I'm checking if one of them is dividing my my factors dividing at least k of them or not so it divides if it divides I will do count plus plus for some count let's create the count here and if my count is greater or equal to k if my count is greater or equal to k here is supposed to be my answer our answer will be uh, that factorial but there may be another factorial providing that uh, providing that uh, providing uh, divisibility for at least k elements so we have to take max of them okay this is the can be zero starts from one so that's it. Uh, let's now return my answer. Let's compile it. It's not K. It's capital K. Okay. Okay, so I think uh, mm, I think I have to start it from two. Okay. Okay, okay, so I have to do this count outside, not in the, this inner loop. I am checking for each factor that that factor is dividing at least k elements or not. Okay, so if this divides k elements. If this divides at least k elements, then I will update my answer. As max on my answer and that factorial. Okay. Okay. So one thing I have to do here, I have to optimize this uh, factoring code. So what I can do is that see for 48 what I will do I will start from 1 now for 1 1 divides 41 we get a quotient 41 so here is our list I will add 1 
and the quotient after dividing by 1 which is 48 now I add 2 I will add 2 add the quotient of 48 after dividing by 2 which is 24 okay then we will do by 3 add 3 and add uh, 16 okay uh, yeah now add 4 okay so in our collection I think I missed uh, that uh, I think I missed 16 there right here should be a 16 also for 48 that's not a uh, worry so after that 4 so 4 is for 1 and 2 so I will add actually 4 and 12 okay so I will add actually 4 then 12 so we are doing like this so our half cases are gone actually because we are actually adding the quotient also for every number so we have to go before the square root okay we don't have to look over the whole i equal to 1 to sum we have to just look from 1 to this near this root okay so that's what i am going that what i am going so i will do what is i will run the loop Of two square root okay. and then I will beside of this I will add sum divided by i okay now I think it will run and work properly let's uh, submit this Yeah, so it's working properly. Oh, so I hope you like the video. And if you enjoy, then please like, share, and subscribe. See you in the next video.